Second Edris, chapter 5. Nevertheless, as coming the tokens, behold, the days should come that they which dwell upon the earth should be taken in a great number, and the way of truth shall be hidden, and the land shall be barren of faith. But iniquity, iniquity shall be increased above that which now thou seest, or that thou hast heard long ago. In the land that thou seest now to have root, shall thou see wasted suddenly. But if the Most High grant thee to live, thou shalt see after the third trumpet that the sun shall suddenly shine again in the night, in the moon, thrice in the day. And blood shall drop out of wood, and the stone shall give his voice, and the people shall be troubled. And even he shall rule whom they look not for that dwell upon the earth, and the fowl shall take their flight away together. And the Sodomite sea shall cast out fish and make a noise in the night, which many have not known, but they shall all hear the voice thereof. There should be a confusion also in many places, and the fire shall be often sent out again, and the wild beasts shall change their place. And mistress women shall bring forth monsters. Mm. We see these kids today. And salt water shall be found in sweet. And all friends shall destroy one another. Then shall wit hide itself. And understanding will draw itself into its secret chambers and shall be salt of many, and yet not be found. Then shall, right, then shall unrighteousness and inconsistencies be multiplied upon the earth. One land also shall ask another and say, Is righteousness that maketh a man righteous gone through thee? And it shall say, No. In the same time shall men hope be nothing obtained. They shall labor, but their way shall not prosper. To show thee such tokens, I have leave. And if thou wilt pray again and weep as now and fast even days, thou shalt hear yet greater things. Then I awakened, and extreme fearfulness went through all my body, and my mind was troubled, so that it fainted. So the angel that was come to talk with me held me, comforted me, and set me upon my feet. And in the second night it came to pass that Saturnalia, the captain of the people, came unto me, saying, Where hast thou been? And why is thy countenance so heavy? Knowest thou not that Israel is committed unto thee in the land of captivity? Edris has went away for a long time to pray to the Most High. And one of the captains came looking for him. You know, they needed their prophets back in the day. He had gone away from his people. Up then, and eat bread, and forsake us not, as the shepherd that leaveth his flock in the hands of cruel wolves. You know, they needed their prophet back in the day, man. So he was coming to get Ezra and bring him back to the people. And this is what Ezra told him. Then said I to him, Go thy way from me, and come not nigh me. And he heard what I said, and he went from me. 
And so I fasted seven days, mourning and weeping, like as Uriel the angel commanded me. And after seven days, so it was, that the thoughts of my heart was very grievous upon me again. And my soul recovered the spirit of understanding, and I began to talk with the Most High again, and said, O Lord, that bearest rule of every wood of the earth and of all trees thereof, thou hast chosen thee one vine. He's talking about Israel. And of all lands of the whole world, thou hast chosen thy one pit. And of all the flowers thereof, one lily. And of all the depths of the sea, thou hast filled thee one river. In all the builded cities thou hast hallowed Zion unto thyself. And of all the fowls that are created, thou hast named thee one dove, Israel. And all the cattle that are made, thou hast provided thee one sheep. And among all the multitude of people, thou hast gotten thee one people. And unto, unto this people whom thou lovest, thou gavest a law that is approved of all. And now, O Lord, why hast thou given this one people over unto many? He's asking the Lord, why do you keep turning us over to these heathens? And upon one root hast thou prepared others. And why hast thou scattered thy only one people among many? And they which thy gainsay thy promise, and believe not thy covenants, have trodden them down. If thou didst so much hate thy people, yet shouldest thou punish them with thy own hands? He's asking the Lord. Why do you keep turning us over to these heathens? Why don't you punish us yourself? Now when I have spoken these words, the angel that came to me the night of four was sent unto me. And he said unto me, Hear me, and I will instruct thee. Hearken to the things that I say, and I shall tell thee more. And I said, Speak on, my Lord. Then said he unto me, Thou art sore troubled in mind for Israel's sake. Lovest thou that people better than that made them? He's saying, Do you love Israel better than the Most High? Edris had a heart for his people. He prayed all the time for Israel. He fasted almost to death for Israel. He loved Israel. But he's asking, do you love Israel more than you love the Most High? And I said, no, Lord, but a very grief have I spoken. For my reins pain me every hour while I labor to comprehend the way of the Most High and to seek out part of his judgment. And he said unto me, thou canst not. And I said, wherefore, Lord, whereunto was I born then? Or why was my mother's womb then my grave, that I might not have seen the travail of Jacob in the worrisome toil of the stock of Israel? Like I said before in my previous videos, the Most High gave Edris hindsight and foresight. He saw everything. He saw what was going to happen to us in the future. And he saw the past. He saw all the stuff that we was going to go through. How we were going to continually go into captivity after captivity. Even as we are in today. In this U.S. of A. He saw all the horrors that were going to befall us. And it grieved him heavily. And he said unto me. Number me the things that are not yet come. Gather me together the dross that are scattered abroad. Make me the flowers green again that are withered. 
Open me the places that are closed and bring me forth the winds that in them are shut up. Show me the image of a voice and then I will declare to thee the things that thou laborest to know. And I said, O Lord, that bears rule, who may know these things, but he that has not his dwelling with men. As for me, I am unwise. How may I then speak of these things whereof thou askest me? Then said he unto me, Like as thou canst do none of these things that I have spoken of, even so canst thou not find out my judgment, or in the end the love that I have promised unto my people. And I said, Behold, O Lord, yet art thy nigh unto them that be reserved till the end? And what shall they do that have been before me? Or we that be now, or they that should come after us? And he said unto me, I will liken my judgment unto a ring, like as there is no slackness of the last, even so there is no swiftness of the first. So I answered and said, Couldest thou not make those that have been made and be now and that are for to come at once, that thou mightest show thy judgment sooner? <laughs> he said, Could you just get all this over with? Then answered he me and said, The creature may not hasten above the maker, neither may the world hold them at once. That shall be created therein. And I said, As thou hast said unto thy servant, that thou which givest life to all has given life at once to the creature that thou hast created, and the creature bear it even so, it might now also bear them that now be present at once. And he said unto me, Ask the womb of a woman, and say unto her, That's a hell of an answer. If thou bringest forth children, why dost thou it not together, but one after another? Pray her, therefore, to bring forth child, ten children at once. <laughs> And I said, she cannot, but must do it by distance of time. There you go. Then said he unto me, even so I have, I, have I given the womb of the earth to those that be sown in it in their times. For like as a young child may not bring forth the things that belong to the age, even so have I disposed the world which I created. And I asked and said, Seeing thou hast not given me the way, I will proceed to speak before thee. For our mother, of whom thou hast told me that she is young, draweth nigh unto age. Talking about the earth. He answered me and said, Ask a woman that bear children, and she shall tell thee. Say unto her, Wherefore are unto they whom thou hast now brought forth like those that were before, but less of stature? He's saying the world, the world is old now. The fruit that is bearing is old and corrupted. It's not like a, like a woman who bears a child in her younger ages. The child is stronger than a woman who bears a child in her older ages. I think that's what he's saying. And she shall answer thee, They that be born in the strength of youth are of one fashion, and they that are born in a time of age, when the womb faileth, are otherwise. Consider thou, therefore, also, how that ye are less of stature than those that were before you. And so are they that come after you less than ye. As the creatures which now begin to be old, and have passed over the strength of youth. Then said I, Lord, I beseech thee, if I have found favor in thy sight, 
show thy servant whom thou visited thy creature. All praises to Yahweh. Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. All praises do. So there you have it. The earth is getting old now. We're in the end times. That's why when you look out and you see Israel, the so-called black man or the Negro or whatever you want to call us, whatever byword you want to use, you see the insanity and the madness that has befallen us. We're literally going crazy out of our minds. We see atrocities every day committed by children. We're seeing our women going crazy, our men going crazy. We are destroyed and defeated people because the earth is getting old. And we as a people have been in captivity after captivity. We've been in this country, US of A, America for over 500 years of oppression, slavery, atrocities. Everything has been done to us as a people. We have been beaten down. We're literally turning on our own, each other. There's a hate for each other we have. There's no love that we have for each other. If we don't turn our faces back to the Most High, and take on the two world commandments. As in Matthew chapter 22 verses 37 through 40. There is absolutely no hope for us. We are in the end times. Yahweh is coming back. He's going to visit his people again. And he's coming back this time for judgment. There's going to be a lot of people that's going to be destroyed. But that's the way it's supposed to be. He's going to separate the wheat from the tares. And he ain't going to be playing. There's no repentance no more. This is the time of judgment. So if the Most High is dealing with you, with your mind, with your spirit and your soul, you better start to focus on him because that's the only way. As you can see, this country is going down. This world is decaying. But it's going to be renewed. When the high shot come back. But who's going to be a part of that renewal? Who's going to be the elect? I don't know. I hope that I am. But who? It's not going to be many. Not the way we going right now. Because we are literally out of our minds right now. And it's getting worse and worse day by day. So that's my little commentary on that. As I say. Listen to this video over and over again. Meditate on it. And may the Most High and Yahweh Shai bless you.